Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. I am Trace, and this is our brand new series on marijuana. Over the next few episodes, there'll be five of them, we're going to talk all about this plant and how it's got to be so important, where it came from, and what it's doing to your brain and to your insides, and is it good for you? Is it bad for you? Should it be legal? Should it be illegal? So much other stuff. So over the next five episodes, make sure you subscribe so you get all of those. We are going to talk all about this one plant that seems to have captured the imagination of so many people around the world. You can also check out this whole series on iTunes to get all of it at once in an audio podcast. You can get a link for that down in the description. But first, let's kick into this. What is marijuana? Where did it come from? Marijuana is referred to in a lot of different ways. People call it weed or pot or ganj or, you know, all sorts of stuff. But we're going to talk about it scientifically because this is D-News. And because of its legal status, scientifically speaking, marijuana is actually really hard to study. There was actually a ban on studying it until 2015 when the Obama administration finally lifted a lot of the bureaucracy that was in the way of doing scientific studies on this plant. So there's more research on its way. But as of now, here's what we know. There are cannabis species, not just one. There are maybe a few. When it comes to cannabis species, there are two schools of thought. There's the single species categorization, which was how it was first classified in 1753 as cannabis sativa. Then there is the other school of thought where there are three species, sativa, indica, and ruderalis. Uh, The other type is actually a hybrid. It's, you know, a bunch of different species blended together. But all of these plants actually look different. Sativa is the most recognizable. That's got the thin leaves that you would recognize. The recognition of these species was presented in the 1970s when botanists started to look into this. Lauren Anderson and Richard Schultz uh, looked at the cannabis species, and the New York Times called Schultz a trailblazing authority on hallucinogenic plants. Uh, You could actually Google him. He did a lot of research in this area. It's really cool. In 1976, two other botanists classified it as a single species, Cannabis sativa L, with two subspecies, sativa and indica. In 2004, however, a graduate student at Indiana University teamed up with a cannabis expert and used chemistry to figure out exactly how to divide cannabis up right? They concluded that sativa and indica are distinct species, but that ruderalis might be just another variety of sativa. But then in 2005, he published a new study that went back to that three species categorization. So again, because studying this was so difficult, there's not a lot of very specific knowledge when it comes to this plant. But what we do know is where it came from. A 2014 study from the University of Kansas traced the spread of cannabis around the world, and they believe that it's native to Central Asia, around probably Mongolia or southern Siberia. And it's thought of as one of man's oldest cultivated plants, flourishing in nutrient-rich areas and left behind by hunter and gatherer societies. Evidence of cannabis seeds were found in burial mounds in Siberia dating back to 3000 BC and in China dating back to 2500 BC. Records of medicinal use date back to 4000 BC. So it's been around. There's even a 3,000-year-old Egyptian mummy that had traces of THC found with it. From China, it would have made its way to Korea and Southeast Asia and India. And then between 2000 BC and 1400 BC, it went into the Middle East. And from there, because it was such the center of the world, it could be moved all over the world. And it went to Russia and the Ukraine and taken into Europe by Germanic tribes and into Britain by 1200 AD. Cannabis also found its way down into Africa, over to South America, up into North America, probably around the early 1900s, when Mexican immigrants fled north, escaping the Mexican Revolution. There are all sorts of bad connotations of marijuana, in part because of the cultural implications that come along with its spread, you know, stemmed from a fear of immigrants, or so on and so forth. We're going to get into that later, and actually, we'll get into that when we're talking about its legality. But either way, as cannabis spread throughout the world, it was used mainly as 
medicine for healing. Many early descriptions talk about how it would help with depression or appetite or could be used as an anesthetic or an aphrodisiac. But another big reason it spread around the world is because it's a very useful plant. It can be made into hemp and hemp is basically cannabis sativa with way less chemicals so it won't get you high. For thousands of years hemp was used for paper. The US Constitution was not written on hemp paper but it was used for paper for a variety of other reasons. It was also used as rope because it has a high tensile strength. It was used in textiles and biofuel has even been used for food. Hemp seed and hemp seed oil have become more and more popular as of late as the main ingredient for all sorts of things like bird seed. It's illegal to grow hemp in the United States because it is the same plant as the one that gets you high, again, just with less chemicals. So it's considered a Schedule I drug, which we're going to touch on a little bit later. Most hemp fiber comes from India or Romania, China, Hungary, Poland, or Turkey. The hemp industry is quite large at about $500 million globally, and it's a great product for farmers because it can grow in a variety of different soils and also a variety of different climates. It's naturally resistant to pests, so it doesn't need pesticides. And many American states are looking to pass legislation which will help farmers be able to grow hemp and get in on this fairly large half a billion dollar industry. And again, it's not smokable. It's not something that can get you high. It's technically not a drug in that way. And many people will actually say if you smoked it, you would just get a terrible headache. So don't do it. But you probably didn't tune in to this episode to hear about hemp, right? You tuned in to an episode called marijuana to hear about another chemical inside of the plant called THC, also known as Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. And THC is the chemical that affects your brain and gets you high, which we'll get into. THC is just one of many chemicals produced by the cannabis plant. Collectively, uh, most of these are called cannabinoids. There's 109 different cannabinoids in the plant, and they are secreted by the cannabis flower. They produce these things, scientists think, to help fight off pests. In the same way, if you remember from our tobacco series, nicotine is produced by tobacco plants to keep pests from eating the leaves. This may be a reason that the cannabis plant does the same. Cannabis probably produces cannabinoids for other reasons because, you know, if the pests eat it, they start feeling weird and maybe they don't enjoy that. But insects can eat small doses of the leaves and they can be fine. So they think that it might produce cannabinoids to help protect the plant from UV light because UV light damages your DNA. It also damages plant DNA, which causes mutations, and that can be bad. So THC may absorb that UV light, protecting its DNA from mutating. This also gives cannabis an evolutionary advantage, a better chance at surviving. That would be a reason that it would evolve. But these are just theories because, again, more research is definitely needed. There could be, because cannabis has an oil covering its leaves, that the THC is to protect the plant in another way from drying out. There even are theories that it protects it from bacteria or from other funguses. In fact, cannabis plants are fairly well evolved in a lot of different ways and kind of an interesting way. Uh, anyway, fun fact that we discovered, cannabis plants are dioecious, meaning that they have male and female reproductive organs separately. They are not on one plant. So there's male cannabis plants and female cannabis plants. The important thing here is that if you could get high off of both, it wouldn't be a big deal, but you can't. You can only get high off of the female plants. So female plants will produce the necessary means to get humans to feel that way only if they're grown alone. A single male plant, if it fertilizes the female plant, will make it so it only produces seeds, which is not ideal. <laughs> Instead, they have to grow all of the females by themselves with no males around, and the male plant's not good for smoking. So it's kind of crazy, right? Plant sex is weird. We should probably just do a whole series on that. Let us know if we should do that. As a cannabis plant becomes less regulated, as the plants themselves become more available to researchers, we're going to learn more and more about this ancient cultivated crop. But so far, 
We know what happens when we ingest THC and when we smoke marijuana and when we eat something laced with THC, what that does to us. And we're going to talk all about that later on in this series. So make sure you subscribe so you get all of the episodes here and come back tomorrow to get more on the marijuana plant. First, make sure you check out these videos off to my left here. We've got a related video to this. and We've also got a whole related series if you don't want to wait until tomorrow to get more. But either way, let us know down in the comments if you have any ideas of future series we should get into and some stuff that you know about marijuana that you don't think we know because I think we're going to cover it. But you never know. Maybe we won't. Let us know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on D News Plus.